Um, who am I? I am Derek Gathrod. I uh, just recently joined the YUI team. Um, I'm a software engineer here at Yahoo, and I uh, transferred from uh, Yahoo Media and Yahoo Entertainment, where I was working on uh, Yahoo News and various entertainment properties down there. Prior to my life at Yahoo, I was actually working for uh, uh, various startups. And so you can follow me on Twitter and GitHub as uh, at Derek. Um, so what is this talk about? Well, it is a little bit more philosophical than what you're going to get out of the other talks here at YUICOMP. I was originally going to um, talk about porting from other libraries to YUI, but then I felt that was kind of missing an important, uh, an important story of why you'd want to do that in the first place. So as I went around and talked to other members of the team and the people within the community, um, uh, and asked them what it was that they loved about YUI, why it was that they, were, uh, that they chose to use it, and I started to see some patterns emerge. And so this talk is kind of a reflection of those conversations that I had. Is, um, so yeah, in short, it's, um, it's about what makes YUI the most uh, uniquely ideal toolkit to build high-scale, maintainable applica uh, JavaScript applications. So the first why we're going to look at is architecture. And when I say architecture, a lot of people are going to think of something like this, the Sydney Opera House. Um, it's, uh, it's expressionist design is beautiful and elegant. It's iconic. Um, and so like I said, that's what, this is what most people think of when you say architecture. But we're all a bunch of nerds. So when we hear architecture, we think of this. <laughs> uh, it's not quite as pretty, but there's still beauty there. Um, uh, you might not necessarily recognize it in, in this component diagram form, but if we look at the same structure in its physical form, it's the International Space Station. Um, it, it wasn't really designed with beauty in mind, but it's undeniably there, or at least to me, I'm a big science and engineering nerd. So um, when we talk about architecture in the sense of software, we're talking about something similar in design to, uh, to the space station. So let's look at some of those characteristics. Um, or some of the characteristics of smart software. Um, Well-architected software is software that promotes reliability, maintainability, compatibility, and extensibility. So let's look at uh, some of those illities right now. First one, modularity. Modul modules are a concept that's uh, used across many engineering disciplines. Uh, in the space station sense, it refers to the 32 separately constructed uh, components that, that make up the, the space station. In a software sense, they uh, similarly refer to bits of focused, interchangeable components that you can, or that can be used to construct whatever application it is you're tasked with building. Uh, you'll find native module support in various programming languages, Ruby, Python, and Java. Unfortunately, we don't have those in JavaScript. Um, why is that? Well, JavaScript was um, created over the course of a few weeks, so it wasn't really much of a uh, concern at that point. But to everybody's uh, surprise, JavaScript is uh, one of the most popular programming languages on the planet right now um, and gets a lot of use. So we, still, so we actually do have that need for modules there because we don't have it natively in the language. It's up to the developer community to create those. So, um, so let's look at one of those uh, mod or JavaScript module patterns. This comes from uh, about four years ago in the YUI blog. Um, as this is uh, a way to, yeah, to essentially construct a library in a modular architecture. So um, if you look at it, we start with my library, which is whatever it is you're going to call your library, and then go ahead and assign a, a name to your API method. And then you uh, wrap a function. Um, uh, yeah, so you wrap the function. Um, inside of that, you can uh, create whatever private variables and methods that you want to. And what you actually return is your object and that's what you expose to the outside world. Those are, that's your public, uh, public variables and methods. So um, there are some strengths and weaknesses to this specific design. Uh, so as the, as the YUI team thought about it a little bit more, um, they eventually settled on what we now use with, uh, with YUI modules. So this module pattern does the exact same thing as the previous one. The implementation is just a slightly different, though. You see that my library is now YUI, uh, and then we're adding a fizz, uh, module that we're calling FizzBuzz, and then we have a callback function in there. Um, inside of that, it's pretty much exactly the same as what we just had. You can uh, create private variables and uh, export whatever else you want to by hanging it off of the Y object. 
So modules are a fundamental building block for everything you do in YUI. Uh, between the core library and YUI gallery, there are 600 modules that you can use within your application. Everything from uh, DOM manipulation, animation, object-oriented helpers, and a lot more. Uh, it isn't intended that you use all of these, though. Uh, rather, that you just kind of pick and choose which ones you want. So YUI is one of the most popular uh, is one of the most popular JavaScript libraries that uses this modular architecture. But we're starting to see it a lot more with uh, um, we're starting to see modules be adopted more within other libraries. So uh, with that comes emerging standards. We have uh, AMD, uh, then CommonJS modules 1.1 1, 1 .1 and uh, 2.0. Um, let's see, Dojo recently adopted the AMD pattern. CommonJS is really popular within the Node, um, within Node.js. Um, and so YUI is really happy with YUI modules so far. That's not to say we haven't started taking a look at these other uh, module patterns. So. Um, if you're kind of curious to see what's going on there, you can check out uh, some discussion forum or some discussions going on within the YUI um, forums at yuilibrary.com, and uh, you can kind of see what it is that we're doing to maybe possibly inc start including other types of modules within YUI applications. The eventual goal is uh, ECMAScript modules, JavaScript modules. Um, it's still just a proposal, and uh, it's unfortunately, it, I believe, it will be incompatible with uh, our current or with legacy JS engines. So, uh, when we're talking about doing modules inside of a browser, um, we might be a little limited uh, for any applications that need to support uh, legacy browsers. So. So we've talked briefly about modular design in, uh, in JavaScript, but what do you get out of it? The number one thing you get is extensibility. This is the idea that your code is designed um, with future growth in mind, uh, even to be able to grow in ways that you didn't initially intend. When working within a library, it's extremely important that you consider all types of edge cases uh, and make it possible for developers who are going to be using your code to uh, extend and replace functionality that you provide them. Uh, when you think about extensibility, a good comparison might be Lightning McQueen. So this specific toy was designed to look exactly like Lightning McQueen was in the first Cars movie. Um, I'd say they did a pretty good job. But the problem is, what happens when the next sequel comes out? And he's getting a little older, so he needs some rocket boosters to get around the track a little faster. And then, I don't know, later on, maybe he has a midlife crisis and then uh, decides he wants to be a convertible. Um, so maybe a, a, a design more like this might be a little bit more, um, uh, might be more appropriate. With this design, you can just uh, yank off the spoiler, throw on whatever uh, rocket booster modules you want to, and then you can also just uh, pull off the top and all of a sudden, boom, he's a convertible. Um, so in the previous design, you're stuck with exactly what you bought and have to buy a new, and have to buy a new toy every time a, a, a new sequel comes out. So extensibility is important because in web development, there's one constant, change. This is because new libraries, uh, technologies, and standards are always coming out. And uh, it's, it's an evolving ecosystem at an accelerated pace. Uh, years ago, when I was working at a startup, my manager came to me and said, hey, uh, we need to be able to, or uh, let's see, we need a, text edit, or a rich text editor for that form. Um, so we were using jQuery at the time. So I, I searched for jQuery, let's see, jQuery rich text editor plugin. Found quite a few. Uh, clicked through, looked at the demos, found which one most met my, um, most met my uh, requirements. Uh, pasted it in, glued it together, and good to go. Uh, well, the problem was a couple weeks later, he came to me and said, oh, uh, that, ed that rich text editor we added, now we need to allow users to upload uh, images into it. Okay, well, great. So now I have this rich text editor uh, that I need to add a feature into that it was never in, uh, intended to support. So had to go into the plugin, hack around the code a little bit. Eventually got it working, uh, but it wasn't very pretty. So the point of, uh, or and one of the big problems that you get with that is, uh, anytime you want to update that plugin, you you blow away all your modifications. You're locked into that specific version of the plugin. Um, so. The point of this is, don't hack, extend. Most of our business cards say something like front-end engineer, web engineer, JavaScript engineer. Well, where do you think the engineer part comes from? 
Um, our jobs are not to throw together a pile of code uh, and deliver it to the next person who's going to hack in some modifications and then deliver that to the next person who's the poor sap that's going to be in charge of maintaining it. Um, if, if you go through that process, you just end up with an un unmaintainable pile of junk uh, that's thrown away when it no longer fits a spec, and the process is just destined to repeat itself again. Every component within YUI is designed with extensibility in mind. Um, some of the teams at Yahoo that use YUI never even use the vanilla versions of the, of the components, and they just endlessly um, extend the, the base functionality. So when we talk about things like components, modules, extensibility, uh, one of the things you hear is, ooh, that sounds really enterprisey. Um, I, so let's talk about that myth for a second. I go to a lot of meetups and pub nights, and I talk to a lot of people about uh, YUI, and it, it's something I've heard before. I'm sure it's a, lot of, a lot of you have heard that as well. And so let's talk about this uh, for a little bit. When people say that, my first thought is, what do you mean by enterprisey? Is it Something like this? If so, awesome. Like I could, I could probably give a whole talk comparing YUI to, uh, to the Starship Enterprise. Uh, I have a feeling they're probably not talking so much about that, though. And instead, they are referring to um, this complicated mystery machine um, that it, 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 just appears really, uh, it just appears really foreign to people because there's so much going on there. Um, and really, that's just a lack of understanding of what YUI is. Well, YUI is actually extremely simple if you know how to look for documentation on yuilibrary.com. Uh, play around with the examples, uh, hack around with the code, watch videos on YUI theater. YUI is really just a suite of tools uh, that naturally evolve to suit the needs of Yahoo, uh, Yahoo the team, and the community. Uh, you can use as many or as few of the tools as you like. Um, again, modular, extensible design. So let's dive into some of the code a little bit more. This brings me to why number two, infrastructure. So why UI is called a library, but I honestly view it more as a toolkit. Um, that's not saying the library term is incorrect. Uh, the terms library, toolkit, and framework are often used interchangeably. Um, I don't want to get lost in semantics here. Um, but so the reason why I say toolkit is because uh, that to me most accurately describes what YUI is and how it allows you to pick and choose the various tools that you need. Um, and you can actually use them mostly all independent of each other as well. So if you just want a DOM selector, YUI use Node. Um, Canvas, SVG, VML, Graphics layer, uh, go ahead and use, just include Graphics. Uh, calendar widget, Calendar, YQL client, uh, just include YQL. These are pretty typical modules of what you're going to see inside of YQL. But uh, there's also some really unique and cool uh, modules as well. So one of those is YUI Loader. So some of you might recognize this picture. It's uh, from the movie Aliens, where Ripley's getting into her power loader, and she's about ready to go beat the crap out of the queen alien. Um, unfortunately, as web developers, we don't have queen aliens that we can go fight on a daily basis. But we do have a lot of problems that we need to solve with heavy machinery. And um, so one of those problems is script loading. Um, it's pretty difficult. You can do it at a basic level, but if you really want to do it perfectly and most efficiently, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot to manually do by yourself. So let's, so let's take a look at a pretty typical page. I think I lost my, yep. So let's take a look at a pretty typical page um, that's uh, using a modular um, a modular system of organizing its code. Um, so here we have, um, at the top you have your core library, and then below that you start including all of your JavaScript modules. Um, so uh, there's a number of issues with, when you consider performance. Um, first of all, you're cramming all of your JavaScript into the head, which is going to, um, which is gonna, they're all going to execute one by one, and you're also going to block rendering on the page. Um, then you also have a very fragile load order because what happens if you uh, add in one of your modules before the core library? Or what happens if module B requires module A? Um, and so then you have dependency issues as well. Um, and then also with, say you have two dozen modules within your application, are you going to include all of those on every single page within your site? Um, or are you just going to selectively load them in? 
Um, and then when you want to do, when you want to selectively load them in, you're going to run into, or you might run into issues of how, how are you going to calculate dependencies? Uh, also, what if you have CSS dependencies for any uh, UI widgets? So these are just a few of the issues that I thought of offhand. I'm sure there are plenty more. Um, so as you can imagine, these are all issues that Loader is going to take care of for you. So the goal of a module loader is to address, um, uh, sorry, it's to optimize and simplify the process of loading modules. Um, it addresses the issue of blocking by asynchronous loading, addresses dependencies uh, with automatic dependency resolution. Uh, it supports on-demand on -demand module loading, uh, no matter how nested deeply you are inside of your application. Um, and it also supports CSS loading as well. So, Let's look at, so how do you use Loader? Um, so let's go back to our uh, YUI module example that we looked at before. Um, it's the same thing, nothing's changed. Um, so instead of using, or, so there's a couple different ways you can load this in. One of them would be to just include fizzbuzz as a script tag, um, or you can actually make use of Loader. And uh, this is a real basic example of how you would actually do that. Um, oh, by the way, I'll, I'll add in, the, uh, the YUI M.IN, it's a really cool little um, neat feature that um, I, don't know, I think it Alan recently added, but uh, don't use this in production. Um, it, it's, it just makes showing code and demos a lot easier. Really, that is, that'll actually uh, just redirect to uh, the YUI seed file. So instead of having this crazy long URL, it's a lot shorter. So uh, anyways, back to the, uh, back to the example. Um, so yeah, you have your YUI, you have your YUI object that you, or yeah, YUI function that you uh, call use on, tell it you want to lo uh, load fizzbuzz. Well, the problem is, you, Loader at this point doesn't know exactly where fizzbuzz is. There's a number of different ways to configure that out. The easiest way is actually, easiest way is actually just to uh, give it a Loader configuration object. So inside of here, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. You give it a list of modules, and then you just tell it the path of where they're actually located. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, YUI Loader isn't only for um, loading Java, YUI JavaScript modules. It can actually load in CSS as well as arbitrary JavaScript. Here's an example of using it to uh, actually load in jQuery. So um, you define jQuery, jCarousel, and this is for a, a carousel widget, um, and then jQuery, jCarousel CSS. Uh, and you just kind of map all this up, your dependencies, and then down at the bottom, all I'm doing is just doing use J carousel. And that's going to take all of the dependencies, load them in in the actual order that they need to be included in. And uh, we can actually take a look at and see this running. Uh, move my mouse over. So here's just a quick little JS fiddle. Uh, it's the same, same code up here. And if I do play, then here we go. So we have jQuery uh, jCarousel plugin alongside the YUI3 calendar widget. And you can even do some animations. And it, it all works perfectly fine. There's uh, nothing fundamentally wrong with this approach. Um, so I just kind of show it to, to demonstrate the flexibility of Loader. Um, that you can even use YUI Loader for whatever other JavaScript library you need to. So. Um, let me see here. The next thing we're going to talk about is combo loading. Um, now, one of the problems that you run into uh, if you uh, do module loading is that if you're including all of those scripts uh, one by one, or, or, sorry, if, if Loader is going to include all of those scripts for you one by one, and say you have 50 modules, um, you're going to be doing 50 HTTP requests. Uh, that can add up really quickly when you start uh, considering all the JavaScript and images and um, yeah, JavaScript images and CSS that you're going to include. Um, so as you can imagine, YUI has a solution for that. For those of you that don't recognize what this is, this is a, this is a bento box. This is what uh, uh, you'll find. Um, well, the, the idea of a bento box is that it's, um, uh, it's it, yeah, anyways. Uh, it, <laughs> The idea of the bento box is that it's really just uh, what you, uh, for a quick little meal of everything that you need. Uh, and you'll find these in Japanese convenience stores and train stations and bento shops. Um, so I think this really well, or this um, demonstrates the idea of combo loading very well. It's 
little bits that are all put together um, in, in a compact format to, uh, and it'll deliver only what you need. So in one optimized single HTTP request. So uh, instead of say you have three git HTTP requests, as you see here, um, what combo loading is actually gonna do is take all of those modules and combine them into one single HTTP request. So uh, one of the problems that some people think of uh, when they see this, this approach is if you have those 50 or 100 modules and you're loading them all together, well, what about the really long URLs that you can run into with some browsers? Well, YUI also, or YUI's loader um, takes care of that and actually chunks it up into multiple um, requests so you don't run into those types of issues. So if we take the idea of combo loading and then add in the, uh, the concept of modules um, along with loader, and these are all things that you get within YUI, this is magic. I mean, this is what Dave Glass would call huge. Um, so this is something that's very unique to YUI, and this is why Yahoo properties are so damn fast too, because it's, it's the most optimal way that you can load in uh, JavaScript and CSS into your, into your applications. So uh, as I was saying before, I'd love to stay up here and talk about, uh, spend more time talking about all the additional tools that we have, but um, just to, to kind of look at a few of them, the events, base, and plugins, and widgets, uh, those are all, I guess, what I'd consider infrastructure components that uh, really help you make awesome applications within YUI. Um, there's also YUI compressor and builder, uh, YUI doc, uh, and uh, Celic is the new tool that uh, Dave mentioned earlier that we're using for uh, all the documentation generation. Um, you can make use of that. It's not tied to YUI at all. You can use it for any, uh, any documentation generation you want to. CSS grids and reset, um, uh, that's personally like some of the first stuff that I even used with, with YUI going back five years ago. Um, and there's also tons of undocumented stuff that you'll find in Dave's uh, many, many GitHub repositories. So next, uh, next why I'm gonna talk about, this is probably, probably my favorite. Um, and this is, in my opinion, one of the reasons why YUI has been so successful and why we're all here today. And this is because it's open. Open isn't just what we do with our source code, it's the mentality of the entire project. Um, so everything we do is, is designed with the open, with the idea to be open. Um, all of our source code is of course open source, it's all hosted on GitHub. Anyone can contribute to the core. Um, submit pull requests just on GitHub. Uh, it's very simple and uh, it's licensed with a BSD license, which is important because uh, BSD and MIT and there's a few other licenses that are very permissive and they allow you to do, frankly, almost anything you want to with the software. Um, we also have an open CDN, the YUI gallery. It's been mentioned a couple times so far today. Uh, that allows you to publish any uh, YUI modules that you want to so you can let us take care of hosting that code for you. Uh, open hours. Uh, it's a, it, the idea is it's an open meeting with the community that we do about once a month, um, or yeah, sometimes once or twice a month, um, where we discuss kind of the latest uh, projects that we're working on, um, answer any questions and um, uh, request feedback for, uh, for any of the ideas that we have. Um, open communication. Um, we're, we're all very active uh, in IRC on a daily basis. You can find us on Freenode and uh, uh, Pound YUI. And then uh, also, of course, the YUI library forum. Um, and then also definitely go follow YUI library and YUI relay um, on Twitter too. So open development. Everything that we do is developed with the intent to be open. Um, our ticketing system, roadmap, uh, task assignments, they're all visible to everybody in the uh, yeah, on the web. Um, and there's even some really awesome tools within, what, or within Yahoo um, that we sometimes can't even use because, and the reason why is because our community can't use those same tools because those aren't open source. So um, we restrict ourselves only to what our community can actually uh, make use of. Um, then also open documentation. Uh, the entire website is now on, or yeah, the. All the documentation is now hosted in the source tree, which is on the website. Uh, so you can go through, edit, update, and create examples. 
Um, and I already mentioned the Select Documentation Generation Tool. And I'd also um, consider JS Rose Data Stone is, um, uh, is part of our documentation. Um, if you haven't checked that out, it's really cool. If you come from a jQuery background, like myself, um, it, it's really useful to be able to have a, um, a Rosetta Stone where you can kind of translate from one library to another, um, back and forth between them. If you're interested in learning more about some of the stuff you can do with jQuery, but you're really familiar with YUI, um, that's, a, that's another great um, resource. So I actually use it uh, very frequently where um, it, I need to know, I, I forget the syntax of any of the API or um, yeah, any of the API functions that I want. And that's really a quick way just to go hit control F and search for IO or Ajax, or not Ajax, but Anim um, or something. So, um, and I would also really encourage you guys to go out and watch YUI3 on GitHub. Uh, I, th I, Dave mentioned how many watchers we had earlier today. Um, I don't remember what that number is, but I looked at it recently and we're not, we're getting close to one of the top 50 projects on there. So uh, there's no reason, if you're in attendance today, there's no reason why you shouldn't go straight to GitHub and go hit the follow button so uh, you can watch everything that's going on with the YUI project. Um, and yeah, that's it. So thanks.